everybody. I'm Lauren. I'm Emma. And you're listening to The Oak View. Hey, Emma. Hey, Lauren. How was your Thanksgiving? My Thanksgiving was surprisingly very calm. Really? I mean, if you guys have heard the first episode, you know that I come from a very chaotic family. And I was really surprised that no one had any beef. No chaos. No chaos. No stress. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. I feel like we're making progress. Okay. You know, I was thinking about how the holidays are a hard time for a lot of families. And especially during this time, having a calm holiday with not the extended family, just the immediate family, is really what we needed. Yes. But... You have to know something, though. What? My family is not the kind of family where we usually do things on our holidays. We're usually sitting around the table for dinner, talking about what's going on in our lives, and that's about it. But this holiday was a little different because I asked both of my sisters and their husbands to bring games. And we played games. You had a game day? We had a game day. That literally sounds so much fun. It was so much fun. We played Pictionary, this game called Sequence. And nobody fought during these games. And no one fought. What do you mean this game called Sequence? Like, like, (laughs) you've never heard of it before? I've never played it before. You have never played Sequence before? No, I am the master at the game. I literally, I always win. And I don't even like to play it anymore because, like, if I lose, I will be devastated. That's It'll so ruin my life streak. It was great. It's such a good game. It really was a good game. And I had a lot of, I don't know, strategic mind connections mm-hmm. with my partners. It was pretty fun. But we played Pictionary. And if you can imagine my family playing Pictionary, it was as <laughs> funny as it's being imagined. I believe you. So this is what happened. That's awesome. I split everybody up into groups that were not with their significant others so that we could be competitive because I'm very competitive. (laughs) And it worked out where we were winning and losing so well that like everyone was able to compete at least one time with their significant other. Mm -hmm. So watching my mom and dad try to draw something (laughs) for the rest of us was hilarious. But it's also something that you know, we normally don't do so. There's a lot of rules to those games that my siblings follow that I didn't really know about. Mm -hmm. So my dad had the word hieroglyph. I couldn't pronounce it. Excuse me. Excuse me. What? Hieroglyphics, you know? You put that in a Pictionary game? It's in this game, right? No, it is not. It's considered one of the- I think if I got that word, I would just leave. I'd be like, I'm sorry, it's over. Well, it's so sad that my dad had to use it because when he was trying to draw it, it looked like he was just drawing scribbles. And so I was like- how do you even draw that? Exactly. I think you would have to do like a wave as in like, hi. Right. Like a hello and then do like it phonetically. And then, like, a rowboat or something. Yeah, but, like, they have all these rules where you can't make symbols, you can't make gestures, you have to draw the thing. And it could be, Mm -hmm. like, you know, if the word was, I don't know, something like, oh, like the word symbol. You can't draw a symbol representing symbol, but you can draw a crash symbol, you know, to say symbols. As long as they say the word correctly, it didn't really matter. Mm Mm-hmm. But my father got hieroglyphics. Oh, my goodness. And I could not pronounce hieroglyphics. So when you're in the... So were you trying to guess it? I was trying to guess it because he was... uh, And you... Did you even, like, get in the ballpark? I... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is how crazy I am. My brain... Tell me everything. My brain works so great. So it was my aunt and my dad doing an all play. And he was making this, like, scribbly mark on his page. And I was like, what are you drawing? And I thought he was drawing, like, man from, like, child to grow into old. (laughs) I was like, what is this, like, coming of age, evolution? evolution. (laughs) Exactly. And my brother-in-law is on my team, and he's yelling. He goes, it's got to be a language. And I was like, a language? But you're not allowed to write things. But you can't write anything. So he's drawing, like, scribbles and, like, you know, making them all, like, weird looking. And I'm screaming, like, what are you doing? So he was like, 
he's like, think of old languages. And I was like, um, um, I don't know old languages. So I started yelling like Hebrew and uh, Judaism. Yeah. And because I couldn't come up with another. And then I was like, Arabic. And then he's like, keep going, keep going. And I was like, oh, oh, it's the one with the cavemen. And then they're like, no. And I was like, uh, it, <laughs> I was like, it has to be the one with the, you know, oh, no, it's the other one. It's like the Mayan Aztec hieroglyph. Hi, hi, gr- hi, oh girl. My gosh. And so I'm yelling and I'm screaming at my brother in law, who's on the other team, because I have two brother in laws. He's like trying to keep time and he's also trying to make sure that I say the right word. So I look at him, I'm like, mm-hmm. hieroglyphic. And he's like, say it again. I'm like, hylogryphic. And he's <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, no. And I was like, hieroglyphic. And then Candace <laughs> is on my team and Candace is like, look at me, say it to me. I can help you. And I was like, hieroglyphic. And he, she's like, hieroglyphic hieroglyphic and then he's I'm like i'm dying right now <laughs> and i'm like and i'm like i'm literally on the ground like it is correct no and i was like hieroglyph hilog- hieroglyphic and and pd who's my brother on my team he was like hieroglyphic and i was like no i don't oh know God. and then the time went off you're like i don't know how to oh no no no, no. and my brother-in-law clint goes hieroglyphic and I was and like, couldn't have said that. No, 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 that was wrong. He goes, it's hieroglyphic or glyphic or whatever. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> but I was like, but I was right. Oh my gosh, you were like literally like one syllable, like syllable off. away. And they're very stiff, like they're sticklers on rules. So I was like, I couldn't get it right, and I couldn't say it correctly. And he's like, there's no L in hieroglyph. And I was like, that's it. That's what I messed <laughs> up. And so I had to miss a point just because I couldn't say the right word. But I was having so much fun that I was laughing so hard that I was like on the ground, keeling over. But guess whose team won? Mine. By OMG. like a whole lot because my team's awesome and everyone on my team is always great. But it was <laughs> hilarious because it's so funny because like I think someone else had the word slope. And they drew like a These curve. Are such hard words. I know. And they drew like a curve to go down, right? A curve to just, you know, picture a slope. Yeah. But every time I kept saying like valley, hill, sledding hill, um, mountain, they just kept pointing to the at the at, at the, the word. Line. And I was like, Am I close? And I'm just <laughs> screaming. And as soon as the time went off, I was like, What is it? And they're like, It's slope. I was like, What? That is not how you draw a slope. Also, give me some more clues. <laughs> not just like one line. Come on now. You've drawn a, a graph. You know, like an X. They could have drawn. Axis. Yeah, okay. We don't think like that. <laughs> Our family does not think that way. I literally got the word Swiss army knife. And I drew a knife and a piece of cheese with holes in it. And I was okay. like, cheese, type of cheese, Swiss. And then I couldn't, you can't draw a symbol. So I couldn't draw the army symbol. So I'm trying to draw a buff man with a gun. And then the other team got it. Oh, my gosh. It was so much. It was so much fun, though. I've never had so much fun at a holiday before. Well, now you know that come Christmas, you need to play some more games. And come Christmas, we need to keep the family uh, dynamic small because we had so much fun. And even though we had so many dishes to clean up, it was just so much fun being with just the immediate family. Yeah. How was your holiday? It was good. It was like... We got crabby before we ate, obviously, because... But I saw your cute TikTok about your pie. Yes, I did make a TikTok about the pie. I mean, okay, here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is so sad. I literally, I had Wednesday off of work. I baked so much because, uh, you know, I wanted to give some pies to, like, both sides of our families. So I made two pies, and I made all these mini pies, and I made cookies, right? You're, you're doing too much. I know, I know, but I wanted to eat it all, so that's why I made it all. <laughs> Selfish reasons are always the best reasons. I so I, I like, oh my gosh! So my family, I had like all of this dessert, and nobody ate any of it. You're lying. It's so sad. I was like, guys, I spent hours doing this. Do you have leftovers? Can I come get some for the dessert? Yeah, I literally have like. More than half a pie in my freezer. Okay, right I'm coming over and I'm gonna get some it's pie. An apple pie, and it was amazing. It was I love like apple pie. pie I've ever made. I oh, showed my so entire sad. family your TikTok. 
because it was so it cute. Really? It was so professional. Like, okay, guys, I'm going to describe you this TikTok. It wasn't that it, it was an average transition. No, so it was lies. Prime. Transitions, no worries. But she put the music of the greatest British baking show and she had this beautiful apple pie that was like sliced thinly into like a rosette. I like arranged the apple. She did such everything. a good job. And then on top, she braided the dough to look like little crossover braids. And then she put little like leaf cutouts with like little designs. I was like, Lauren, you're going overboard, but I love it so much because it's you. So then my husband and I like basically ate the whole pie. That's okay. The last three days. My niece and nephew made cookies. My sister made two pies. My mom made. I'm pretty sure she made, like, a crumble cake or something. I was like, guys, mm. we're really overboard here. But it was so good, and I ate everything because I was like, I can't put – I can't not put everything in my mouth. Amazing. Amazing. You know, I love the holiday season, and if anyone knows me, they know I'm obsessed with Christmas. I don't know why. It's not about gifts. It's not about anything but, like, the sparkly lights, my ability to put up my Christmas tree in my bedroom because I can. I have this little village – on my dresser with like little cute yeah i wish you i need to you need to send me a video i'll send you a video and it has like little sparkly christmas trees with some garland and a little giraffe because i love giraffes and i'm obsessed with giraffes and i don't know i just love it i just it gives me you know a way to escape from the world that's so fun oh it was so good though i'm always gonna play games now with my family i love playing games and my family's not really like in super into games and my husband's not super into games, so he'll only play if we have, like, friends over or whatever, and, like, we're going to have a board game night. But, like, I would do that all the time if it was up to me. That's amazing. I, I don't know. Sometimes I-, I twist his arm and I make him, like, play a game with me. I really like it because most of my family members are really competitive, so it gets really interesting when we lose. Like, we throw fits. I like, like, intense games, like the strategy games, like. I'm obsessed with them. Oh, nice. What what other games do you normally play? Well, we don't normally play. Oh, games, right. Sorry. But I have all these good ones like Catan and like. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with that game, and I've played it like one time. <laughs> Lauren, I was thinking, you know, after we did our episode last week about the dream gap, I went home and I told my parents and my family about everything that was important to me about the dream gap. And it actually sparked a really good conversation with my niece and nephew because they're looking for, you know, gifts for Christmas. And I told them about Goldie Blocks. And it turns out that my sister is also a big fan of Goldie Blocks. And so oh, really? we're going to get um, some gift cards for the kids and I'm going to buy some of those kits. And I'm really excited because like... That's so fun. You should do it with them. I too. would love to. I, I saw this really cute um, make your own unicorn pillow with like a circuit lights and like yeah, and it, it, like, lights up. Yes. Yeah, that's so cool. And you have to make it yourself. Like, they have to... Exactly. ...wire all the whatever. I don't know if they have to code it or not. Yeah, but I thought, you know what? That was an awesome conversation, and I'm really happy that we talked about those brands because it, I, I got to brought in my knowledge and research, and it was super cool. Yeah, it was so funny. Uh, you know, like, after we recorded it, we were like, well, I think that went okay. Like, it was an okay conversation. But once we were editing it, it was like, wow, like, it ended up even better than both of us thought. It really did. We did both learn a lot and, like, share some knowledge. So, like, that's that's our vibe. That's the vibe we want to give. Absolutely. And I think it's really nice that we're getting really deep into these topics that are really important to us because then we can start sharing those informations with other people. But I just really hope that when people hear that episode, they can share it with some friends and family and they can really get us connected because then we can have even more awesome conversations. Absolutely. So I was thinking that we could talk about some goals that we have moving forward. And if you and I had any idea about what the end of this year looks like, because I think we're doing a really good job at keeping up every week And once January comes, maybe we can start getting some interviews going. Maybe we can start getting people on this podcast. Yeah, I totally agree. I think one of our goals is definitely to work ahead a little bit. Absolutely. We're recording the week of currently because with the holiday and everything, we got like a little behind. Mm -hmm. That's not the prepared people that we like to be. Nope. And that's okay. We're new at this. And that's okay because, hey, the last episode turned out really great. 
and and hopefully this one will too <laughs> maybe this is our way of putting an advertisement out hey anybody looking to edit a podcast the oakview podcast at gmail.com it's at the end you know it yeah but you know what i think us making a routine and getting a schedule together has been part of our challenge this current month and i think we're doing a lot better at it no and it's it's this big learning process this is obviously this is way harder and way more work than emma and i thought of it when we were like we should make a podcast when really emma was like (laughs) emma was like lauren we need to make a podcast and i was like are you sure and she was like yeah and i was like okay it literally went exactly like that but i envisioned so big that i you know i always want to tackle a huge amount of projects at one time and that's why i'm like let's do this it was so funny emma was like we need to start a podcast and we were doing all this research and i started like researching you know like how to put it on platforms and this and that and i'm sending her all this stuff and she's like we need to just do it very true I was like, we need to just figure out how to do it. <laughs> it's literally what we were doing earlier. So before we recorded, Lauren and I are working on our logo because we really want stickers and I really want to put this on a t-shirt. And I'm like, let's just, this this is it. Let's just be done. And Lauren's like, can we sleep on it? No. I'm like, no. <laughs> like, I'm ready. Like, this is it. This but is we're our... sleeping on it, right? It's going to give me anxiety. It's fine. You can sleep on it. I'm... Otherwise, I'll spend the rest of my life being like... <laughs> Oh my gosh, we didn't spend enough time on it. I didn't get to sleep on it. (laughs) I didn't get to agonize over it as much as I wanted to, Emma. That's so funny. (laughs) I don't think like that. I think it's because when I went to architecture school, we used to do this method where you would have to design 30 things in 30 minutes. And it didn't matter if it was complete or not, but you just had to do it. And at those moments, I was like, And that's boom, how boom, fast boom. you were? And you had to just go fast because you had to just let your brain consistently connect to its right side. I would freak out. And that's why you're an engineer and I'm an architect. Yeah, that's one of my professional flaws. Some of the other <laughs> engineers at my work can like just whip out prototypes and this and that. And I'm like, who? And it's not my strong suit. I don't work fast. And like, So if you want something done fast... Don't come to me, but if you want something really, really thought through and perfect and to a T and very, very organized with no flaws, come to me. That's totally okay. I'm going to say no flaws. I think that's why it's good to have a team, you know, so you can brainstorm and get things out as oh, quickly absolutely. as you can. And then someone can perfect it like you. Okay. So my goal moving forward is I would like to continue to have broad conversations about topics that we care about. And I would love for some people in those fields to come Wait, chat with write us. Write this stuff down. Oh, okay. Yeah, totally. Write it down. I made those noises on purpose so people would know that I'm <laughs> getting a notebook out. Here, let me do the papers. ASMR. <laughs> what does that mean? That's you don't know what ASMR is. Um, it's basically when people really like soothing sounds. People on YouTube will like whisper and make clicking noises. Why is it ASMR? Um, it stands for a specific acronym that I will tell you because Google is right here. ASMR signifies the subjective experience of low-grade euphoria. Anyways, moving on. So basically what I'm thinking is that we can have more conversations like the dream gap. We're going to be heading into the wage gap here and equality in the work world for women. And I really want to start talking with some people that we know in the fields. I love talking about a a range of subjects to friends that I have, people I don't know, just to be consistent about the kind of perspectives that we need to just make this podcast great. I should say greater because we're doing a great job. I can't talk. I'm writing. It's fine. You're going to have to carry. (laughs) What was I going to say to you before? I'm doing really good with my breathing, by the way. Oh, I'm probably not. Okay, yeah, that was literally like the goal that I was going to say. We need to do better about our pacing. You know, I think a good goal about pacing is that you and I become more comfortable behind the microphone. Because I notice that even when I'm in front of large groups, I tend to like speak more intently, but I absolutely have the fault of using words like like, 
Yeah, we edit out a lot of that. You know, because I really want to be more direct with the kind of conversations that we have. Whenever you hear a like or an um or a in the last episode, I think I said, you know, literally a hundred times. I was literally texting Emma like, I hate myself right now. (laughs) My friend Gracia, uh, she says things like, you get me? Instead of you know, and I love that about her. I was like, that's just just like a personality trait. Like she's, she just makes, and I go, yeah, I understand. Like every time she goes, you get me? I go, yeah, yeah, I get it. I try to take that language out of my work uh, lingo, but it's really hard and I'm very much struggling in that. You know, I've been trying to figure out ways where I can respond more with my personality at work. So if someone says, Emma, could you do this task? I go, of course. What would you like me to do? This is the things that need to get done, X, Y, and Z. And then they go, thank you. And I go, you're welcome. I'm happy to help. That's been my like closing thing because I I want people to realize that, especially because I'm working from home, when I say thank you, I'm not just like, yeah, you're welcome. You know, I want them to be like, (laughs) you're welcome. Like, I, I am genuinely happy to help you. Oh, yeah, the thing I was going to say before is that, you know, these these are goals just for us. This isn't like, is this our New Year's goals? I think this is just like, I think this could be a nice goal for the end of the year to get us till the end of December, and then we can do a podcast that's just about our goals for the next year. Okay, and some resolutions. Yeah, some. because I think we need to be very specific and honest with ourselves about like what this is to us, because we know we're hitting a target audience. Our target audience of the few people that listen who know us. Well, this is the second part about this. Is like we understand that people are listening because they support us thank as you people. For listening. Yes, thank you for listening. But also, That's like, so nice of you. Can you please share it with your friends? You're so pushy. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. There's only so much a posting on social media that I want to do that doesn't annoy my friends before they block me. You know, and it's so hard to to try to stand out, but. I still think that my goal is 100 people by June. I would love a consistency of 100 people. And not because I want people to be, you know, in the thousands listening, because I want more families and more children to have access to the information that we're trying to express. Also, for women to just be informed about what's happening around us. I agree. You know, just an example setting. You know, like conversations between intelligent women are not a norm. And we we like having these intentional discussions of things that matter and it's making our friendship better. Yes. As well as we we ask you, the listener, to give us constructive feedback because we think that conversations that are unlikely to be had in your friend group, amongst your dinner table, you know, at work. What are the topics that you wish you could talk about with your friends or like you wish you talked about more with your friends or if you find interesting uh, but nobody around you does, you can email those to us and we'll talk about them. Yeah, I'll talk about the boring thing that you like because I really am curious. I mean, we did a whole episode about Avatar. Whoa. (laughs) Take it back. I take it back. I'm sorry. I have gotten compliments from that episode. It's because everybody knows you. That's true. (laughs) Hey. (laughs) Also, shout out to my friend Mauro who texted me after like four years of not seeing him and was like, I like your Avatar episode. Thank you. Thank you for showing up for us. I love those like Facebook friends that you literally absolutely never talk to, but they're like, yeah, you go. Yeah, you go, girl. You just get it. Yeah. Go, Glenn Coco. Thank you. Seriously. they, They just support you from the edge and that's all we need. I don't need you to be my BFF to be supportive. Okay, what else? Okay, I want at least five guests that we don't know directly by the summer. I know. I just gave her a look. The, a look of like, oh, <laughs> Emma. So my question would be, does that count as in you invite someone that I don't know? Or do we have to find people through people that we don't know? And want to know better because that's part of our goal. Good question. Well, I think it could be a mix. Mm-hmm. Like two of the five could be like, Emma, meet meet so-and-so. Deal. I love that. <laughs> I think my goal is to not have to edit. 
I think my goal is to not edit as much as we do. Yeah. Oh, we should also make a goal. Okay, this is a real goal. Real goal is that we should have a transcript made for our podcast. I don't know how that works, but we need to figure out how it works and get a transcript made so that people in the deaf community can enjoy this podcast because I'm sure plenty of deaf people listen to podcasts. Absolutely. Where do you think we would be able to post the transcript? Also something we have to figure out. I know that there's a way to do it, and I know that there's a way to view podcasts as text, even if we make it a YouTube video and do that. I would love that. Post our podcast on YouTube. That's also an option that I've been meaning to talk to you about. I already set up our account because I'm ready for it. Oh, let's do it then. We should back post our all yeah. our episodes on there. I but think you we can, can generate a video. Do we want to do that? We should totally generate a video and we should put like some imagery that we've been doing. Also, I would like to get some non. I Here's my thing. I do not believe that you need to go to college to be successful in life. I don't. I don't think that's how the real world works. I agree. I also think it's outrageous that society today asks people like us at this age to be in an astronomical amount of debt. Point being is that I would like to invite some people that I know in my life who are not high degree people, who are not in the STEM field, who are doing other types of careers and occupations to get some perspective. But also I'd like to invite those people just because I'm very curious what they do. Again, like I mentioned before, my eye doctor friend, my friends who are in other science fields are fun for me because I'm not in science. Mm -hmm. I would like to have broader conversations about women with women who are not like us. Also for people that are not just our best friends because it's very interesting to talk to people who don't really know us closely. I concur. Okay. Do you have any goals besides editing goals you understand how logistically i think yes i'm like big picture over here like rainbows and butterflies and you're all like and i'm like editing I'm like, let's hold it up right now let's like, please cut out the like i'm like how do we get noticed by michelle obama and you're all like breathing tweet at her every five minutes yeah but we have to have some traction for this to be worthy of michelle obama she has a podcast We released a podcast the same year as Michelle Obama, so when nobody's listening to our podcast, it's okay because everyone's listening to Michelle's podcast. I think that's a concurrent goal of mine, is to have a podcast be released the same year as Michelle Obama. Okay, we checked one off. Check. Done. Check. We're done. Time to go. Bye. We're just groupies. We're groupies. (laughs) We're just copying her because she's I just love her so much. I read her book this year. Oh, I almost am done. Really? Yeah, I have it. And I also got the audiobook because I'm so lazy and slow about reading that I really needed it to be written down for me. Okay, what else? I have some personal life goals, but I'm going to save that for our resolution Yeah. goals. Also, I don't believe in resolutions. I just believe in making myself better every year because it's really hard to be good all the time. So I like to give myself a lifetime to figure it out. Okay, what else should we talk about? Because I feel like this is a great little jab at ourselves in a good way positive jab to like get ourselves rolling i agree do you think this content is good enough to make as an episode absolutely i totally think remember because in the beginning are we boring you not at all i don't think so i mean if we are i'm sorry but this is not about you <laughs> it really See, is we keep going back and forth <laughs> okay we need to decide if we care about this being important this is like so this is so frustrating (laughs) because i think it's hard to gauge when there's not a lot of people checking in emma and i emma and i (laughs) i'm like covering my face right now she's so embarrassed emma and i are in this constant tug of war between this is just for us we don't care who listens and then we think this is good content and like i think it'd be great if more people listened and like joined in in our conversations and then we're like (laughs) Oh, like editing doesn't matter. Like it's okay. We just want it to be raw. We want it to be real, and people can hear us breathing, like, <laughs> like awful. 
And then we're like, oh, but we want it to be good quality and Lauren's a perfectionist. <laughs> then we're like, we need to talk about this, this, and these important things. And then we're like, well, we're not really totally prepared. So let's just make a fun episode about Thanksgiving. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm dead. <laughs> but she makes me edit out every single, you know, like every time I breathe in. So I'm like editing for okay. two hours for a 30 minute podcast. You, you are welcome, listeners. All right. You're welcome for this high quality audio for a low quality podcast. Okay, but like it's so hard to decide whether or not this is important for the larger picture because we don't have any You're feedback so big picture i think that for our new year's resolutions i should come up with the big picture ideas and you should come up with the details okay we need to switch the rules well i mean like for people that do listen and that are checking in we genuinely are asking for some feedback because we want to know if this is worth continuing in the next year I'm having a lot of fun because I'm getting time to spend with you. It is fun. And we keep saying that we want to talk about these other things and we keep not recording them because it seems daunting in some way. I, I think it's very scary. I mean, we, we just finished recording an episode with my sister who is a licensed marriage and family therapist and child play therapist. And it got really intense about, you know, really important conversations about kids and why we need mental health. And that was really intense. It was really overwhelming because I didn't realize how much we could really make this happen. Yeah, and how much we learned. And I would just love to talk to any random person. Seriously, call us, email us. Please don't call me, but please email me. (laughs) You know, I think this is important to remember is that we do want this to be about us and for us. But we also want to, like, use the knowledge that we have to share with other people. So yeah, like basically that's the hard we part. want we want both. We want it to have our cake and eat it too. I would like to say por qué no los dos. Por qué no los dos. Seriously, because like I I and I don't mean that in a in an offensive way. I'm seriously saying why can't we have both? I really want both. I want to be able to have a good time with my best friend, but I also really want to help people. Let's have it all and be it all, girl. Fine, deal, done. This is the episode. I'm very proud of it. We've decided we've decided write that down lauren so we can wrap this up what am i writing have it all be it all have it all be it all you want to close it out bye i do that every time i was like (laughs) really goodness thank you for listening to our podcast please share follow rate email us we appreciate you listening we do we appreciate you listening to this fun buffer episode we do More impactful content is in the works, created, on the way. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. This has been another episode of The Oak View. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks again for listening to The Oak View. You can follow Lauren and Emma on Instagram at The Oak View Podcast. O-A-K-V-I-E-W. Or email us at theoakviewpodcast at gmail.com.